Hi, my name is Brian Room, a master's student in the neuroscience program at Memorial University and co-organizer of the Brainstorm competition. This is a province-wide competition for high school students in Newfoundland and Labrador. Students are tested on their knowledge of neuroscience in a spelling bee style competition. All of the questions are based on the 64-page booklet, Neuroscience, Science of the Brain. To qualify for the provincial competition, students compete at their local high school by completing a quiz. Grades from each of the high schools are sent in to us at Memorial, and we will rank the grades. The top 50 students from across the province will be invited to compete in the provincial competition here on April 20th in St. John's. The student that wins the provincial competition will go on to compete in the national competition held at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. Dr. Vanderloot and I have recently begun organizing the competition, but it has been running since 2000 under the watch of Dr. John McLean. For many years, our neuroscience group has endeavored to increase awareness of brain issues and the possibility of careers in neuroscience by various approaches. We submitted Brain Awareness Week proclamations at City Hall and Government House, went into schools and talked about our research and important information on drugs of abuse. In 2000, we decided on a different approach. We held a contest for high school students and Brainstorm was born. Our contest was associated with the International Brain Bee, originally hosted in 1998 at the University of Maryland, using similar questions that our competition used. All questions were from a 100-page Brain Facts booklet, and that became available online in recent years. We started small. We advertised locally, and the first year we had seven students from two local schools. At first we held the contest at Holy Heart of Mary High School, then around 2007, we obtained sufficient funding to include a wider provincial audience, even Labrador. I'm very proud of the fact that we are the only local brain bee in Canada that includes schools from outside the metropolitan area. Other competitions keep local. For example, students in Toronto would compete with other students in that city at the University of Toronto. We had preliminary contests in schools and invited the students with top marks to our final contest. We began holding the contest on a Saturday at the medical school. High school students got to see the exciting neuroscience research going on at Memorial University and learned about the potential careers in the field. We gave the students and accompanying guardians, such as teachers and parents, lunch. All competitors received some sort of prize for competing, the value of which depended on their placement. The winner of our competition for the past few years has gone on to the Canadian Brain Bee, sponsored by the Canadian Institutes of Health Research and hosted by McMaster University in Hamilton. Since 2012, the local contest has been organized by graduate student Brian Room and Dr. Jackie Vanderloot with new and exciting features. Students, along with their teachers and parents, will be given tours of the medical education and neuroscience research laboratories to see some of the cutting-edge research being performed here at Memorial. Here are some examples of research being carried out by graduate students here at Memorial. Hi, my name is Amin and I'm a third year PhD student in neuroscience at Memorial University. In our lab, we are doing research on the cellular and molecular mechanisms underlying learning and memory. We use olfactory learning as a model system. This is an olfactometer that is used to train rats to learn a specific odor that is paired with a reward such as delivery of sugar water. Odor travels from odor bottle to odor sampling port. On the following testing day, if the rat remembers the odor, it will leak the reward port upon odor delivery. We then study the biological changes in the rat brains that are trained to understand how the memory for an odor is formed. Hi, I am Jillian from Dr. Chi Wan's lab where we look at cellular changes that occur in the brain as a result of learning. In doing so, we can learn how memories are formed and retrieved, which can help us further understand and eventually treat memory-related diseases like Alzheimer's. Once neural tissue is collected, it needs to be processed so that we can study what is happening at the cellular and molecular levels. We can do this by using a cryostat, a machine that is used to slice tissue into even thin slices, kind of like a meat slicer. Inside the chamber, the frozen tissue is firmly mounted onto a stage. As the handle is rotated, the sample advances towards a sharp blade for slicing. To mount, we simply hold the glass slide above the slice and firmly press the glass onto the tissue. Then we can run many different assays like cell staining, immunohistochemistry, or in-situ hybridization to name a few. 
Hi, I'm Nicole from Dr. Chen's lab, where we use a technique called patch clamping. By placing an electrode on a nerve cell, we can analyze and measure a cell's electrical activity. For example, here we're looking at a nerve cell in the reward center of the brain. Under normal conditions, the cell fires action potentials in a slow, regular pattern. But after calcium channels are opened, it fires in a tightly clustered pattern called burst firing. Understanding how this change in firing pattern is regulated is important in understanding disease states like addiction and may help lead to improved treatment options in the future. Hi, I'm Lauren and I'm a graduate student in Dr. Vanderloot's lab. My research is focused on identifying survival factor proteins for stem cells within the nervous system. Pressel violet staining is one of the techniques that I use to examine changes in the histology of the developing brain and spinal cord. And in my project, I've knocked out or removed two genes that are known to be crucial for survival and proper formation of the nervous system. So by comparing the tissue histology between a normal brain section and one that has had a gene removed, I can identify areas of the nervous system which require these genes for survival and which cells are dying. This allows for a better understanding of the roles these genes and the proteins they code for play in the survival of stem cells and may someday help in creating a better treatment option for patients with a variety of brain injuries. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm working in uh, Dr. John Weber's lab. Uh, we have several areas of focus in our lab, one of which is working with agents that may protect the brain from neurodegeneration or damage from a traumatic injury. We focus on substances derived from natural products, such as antioxidant compounds derived from local Newfoundland berries. In our experiments, cell cultures undergo mechanical or physical damage using a machine designed to stretch the cells and simulate a traumatic brain injury. We study how to protect the brain from harm by adding extracts from the berries to some of these injured cultures. Results from the studies are promising as we have found the extracts from blueberries and lingonberries can protect the cells. Although there is still ample work to be done, it seems that a diet high in antioxidant-rich foods like blueberries may offer some protection from the effects of traumatic brain injury. Hi, my name is Vanessa and I'm a second year master's student here at MUN. I work in a learning and memory lab that focuses on the behavioral and cellular aspects of learning. My specific area of research is focused on identifying the intracellular mechanisms involved in long-term memories. I use a technique called western blotting. So proteins from my tissue samples are separated using gel electrophoresis, which separates proteins based on their molecular weight or size. Heavier proteins take longer to travel through a gel than smaller proteins. Once my proteins are separated out, I transfer them to a membrane in order to make them accessible for antibodies to bind. Antibodies are designed to bind to specific proteins of interest, so with this technique I can compare how protein expression changes between learning and non-learning groups. This is just a taste of some of the amazing techniques and projects we are working on here at the Neuroscience Group in Munn's Faculty of Medicine. We study a variety of diseases with neurological origins, such as stroke, Alzheimer's, obesity, and traumatic brain injury, to name a few. Our techniques range from gene manipulation to recording the electrical activity of individual brain cells, from studying how proteins and drugs can influence brain cells, to using powerful microscopes to analyze whole brain slices. We make use of cutting-edge technology to answer some of the most important and some of the most puzzling questions about the brain, and we're always in need of fresh insights and new ideas. Interested? Speak with your biology teacher about writing the brainstorm quiz in your school to qualify for the provincial competition. We're looking forward to seeing you.